So I took footage of this virtual exhibit for a live stream. Um, in my hometown, we have a art stroll every first Friday of the month, and things have become a bit more virtual these days, hopefully for not too much longer. Um, so I decided to take the footage and kind of make a more official video with it being condensed, a little bit more um, edited, flows a bit better, and then I also added some detail shots, which are, turned out really cool. I'm going to talk a bit about my art and who's ever interested in checking it out. I don't know if it's anything anybody would be interested in seeing. I just thought I'd put myself out there and share some stuff. communication towards something deeper, and often it is simplified and stuck at surface level. I wanted to first recognize the spiritual figure as a symbol and contemplate what they further represent and what wisdom they have to give. So overall, these three works are triptych, um, a concept originating from early Christian art. And then for the frames, the gold is often a spiritual symbol in many traditions. In Buddhism, it denotes the sun, wisdom, and enlightenment. A halo is gold, holy, and bright. So, the Buddha here, uh, Albert Sarvara, <laughs> I don't really know how to pronounce it, um, holds compassion and is the aid to liberation. And Jesus Christ here on the top, Prince of Peace, is the Son of God and Savior to our true divinity. And Krishna on the bottom, the God of wisdom, compassion, and love. He's the reincarnation of Vishnu, protector of the universe. Okay. So I'll go ahead and I'll talk about this one right here. Um, this one's called The Tree of Life, My Roots Extend to Heaven. Uh, so my favorite part about this piece is hearing people's interpretation of the visuals. Every single person that looked at it saw something almost completely different. It was almost like one of those ink block tests that tell you about your psychology. Everyone's perspective is new and fascinating. I worked on this during the summer before my senior year at University of Utah. I was figuring myself out as an artist, and I worked on exercises from the book The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. I did a bit of spiritual contemplation and meditation, and this work was pivotal in the direction I would take in my art after graduation. My method was free-flowing, as if I was the observer, and I was listening to something larger, directing my imagination and movement. Ink would be first placed randomly, and I expanded upon it. Each mark would determine the next. And eventually, I had an ongoing conversation with an inner me, perhaps a higher me, perhaps a collective unconsciousness. I was interested in learning about symbols and the deeper meaning behind them. Eventually, this piece grew into a Kabbalah-inspired tree of life. I titled it, My Roots Extend to Heaven, We as human beings are branches of a source, a higher reality we can't even fathom in this existence. Okay, so these two on the side here, this one, this one. <laughs> so both of those, um, they're visual representations of a first song I wrote about three years ago, and I wanted to make artwork that expanded upon it, and I love the concept of connecting visual art and music. Um, so the song is about a little tree smothered by larger trees in a big forest, and it's to 
desire was to grow large and strong, to fill the wind between its leaves. Eventually, a forest came through and destroyed everything. The little tree's remains were swept up into the sky, and it finally experienced what it was like to be tall for the first time. Like some species of trees, such as the lodgepole pine and eucalyptus, they require fire for their seeds to sprout, thus rising from the ashes, literally. Um, this is symbolic to releasing old concepts, emotions, and ideas that are no longer necessary. Personally, I recognize thought patterns I hold about myself that do me no good, and releasing them to the flames frees me to make room for beneficial patterns, goodness, and higher being. space and this was a gift for my dad for his 70th birthday last year. John Denver had an affinity for flight and often wrote about it in his songs and one of his desires was to be an astronaut and go up into space. He wanted to be a part of the Civilians in Space program but didn't quite make it on the historical Challenger launch in 1986. Um, John Denver did find his eventual death in 1997 doing what he loved, flying. Perhaps he experienced his greatest desires beyond death, what his human body prevented him from doing. His gaze looks onward and observes what the living has yet to see, something more, something greater. Okay, so these pieces right here, we have Liar the Tree Man, and tree beard, and then night fox down here. So I want to talk about these two, the top two here. Um, so this middle one right here, with no relation to the Lord of the Rings, uh, tree beard is a nickname for this old creature. Around 15 years ago, while in high school and middle school, I loved character design and comic making. I created this being named Liar, spelled L-Y-R-E, like the instrument. I decided to make a portrait of him, old and young. He has a cellular and molecular manipulative powers that gives him the ability to arrange his body into plants he's been in contact with. So looking back, I didn't give him much personality, but I'd like to do a character rework and really hash him out. I think that'd be a lot of fun. So this one down here, Night Fox, that was just kind of a little random doodle. So this top one right up here, this one is called The Garden. This work was inspired by the band Rush and their newest album, Clockwork Angels. And cheers to Neil Peart, may he rest in peace. Uh, Clockwork Angels is a concept album about a young man's quest to follow his dreams. He is caught between forces of order and chaos. He travels across a lavish and colorful world of steampunk and alchemy with lost cities, pirates, anarchists, exotic carnivals, with a rigid watchmaker who imposes precision on every aspect of daily life. Um, so there was a novel in comic made to coincide with it. I love concept albums, I'd love to write one someday. Um, this artwork named after the last track of the album, The Garden, is about reaping what you sow. And I'll read a bit of the lyrics. The measure of a life is a measure of love and respect. So hard to earn, so easily burned. In the fullness of time, a garden to nurture and protect. In the rise and the set of the sun, till the stars go spinning, spinning round the night. Oh, it is what it is and forever, each moment a memory in flight. Okay, so next I'll talk about dreams. Um, this work, similar to one of my other works over here. I start with a, without any concept in mind, and each mark was influenced by the previous. I once had a dream where I was holding this intense and vivid sunset. The moment I reached for my phone to take a picture, vast ugly clouds flew in and the colors were gone instantly. I knew my own bad ticks were my enemy, and once I let it go, so I reappeared at the bottom of the deep blue sea, and a million seahorses were swimming over me. I could see a million more stars in the sea sky. It was vast and vibrant, and it was telling me something I needed to know. Around the same time, I had this dream. I happened upon a moody blues song while I was spinning some old vinyl I hadn't listened to before. The song is called The Balance, and the lyrics are, After he had journeyed, and his feet were sore, and he was tired, he came upon an orange grove, and he rested. 
and he lay in the cool, and while he rested, he took to himself an orange and tasted it, and it was good. And he felt the earth to his spine, and he asked, and he saw the tree above him, and the stars, and the veins in the leaf, and the light, and the balance. And he saw magnificent perfection, whereon he thought of himself in balance. And he knew he was. Just open your eyes and realize the way it's always been. Just open your mind and you will find the way it's always been. Just open your heart and that's the same. This one right here is called In the Future We Will See the Same. I once knew someone that wanted me to make a futuristic landscape and I eventually made this piece after that person has gone from my life. I imagined a future where all our human emotions and petty will be is following something greater, something larger than ourselves. When we see our fellow companions of this life with new eyes, we will see through all the masks, all the built identities, all the suffering to find what is real. Perhaps a oneness, a love, a wholeness. We will all be on the same page. Surely something we couldn't comprehend with our human eyes. It'll be as if we already lived in this future, but we didn't have eyes for it.